Welcome to Lesson 7. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the Charges API in terms of what it is and how it works. We'll also see how it's different from Stripe Checkout. So without wasting any time, let's get this lesson started. So the Charges API is an older version of handling payments, but is still as useful and functional as the Payment Intense API. The only difference is the lack of SCA or strong customer authentication. And the Charges API does make numerous calls or features available to us, such as creating a charge using a token, creating a charge using a card ID, creating a refund, or adding and deleting a card. So in this lesson, we'll see a live example of all these types of calls, then we'll check how they're done in the workflows. So let's start with creating a charge using a token. As pointed out here, you can create a charge and use a one-time use token as the source of the funds. The token will be created using the provided card details. So to see an example of this, we'll need to fill in the form and click on the pay button. As you can see, the charge was successful. So let's check how it's done in the background. So when the pay button is clicked, we are using the action that creates a card token. And this action creates the card token using the information given in the form. Notice that this action is linked to a token element, which is this one placed on the page. We simply named it Stripe Marketplace Token B, but in your own app, you may name it whatever you want. But to complete the payment process, another event is used, which is this one. And also notice that this event is also linked to the same token element. And within the first step, we are using the action that charges the customer. And this action has the amount, the currency, and the payment source, which is the card token taken from the token element. Also, do take note that the amount is in cents. So since 10,000 is equivalent to $100, that's why 10,000 was inserted in this field. And within the next step, we are storing the charge ID in the database to the current user. And because this is just a demo app, we are currently assigning one charge ID to the current user. But in a live app, you want to add the charge ID to a list of charges. We'll now have a look at how to add and store a card as a payment source instead of just having it for one-time use. And we need to add a card first before we can create a charge using a card ID or before we can create a refund. So we can add a card by clicking on the Add button. Then after filling the form, we can click on the Save button. And now that we have added a card, let's see how it's achieved in the workflows. So when the Save button is clicked, we are using this action that creates a card token. But take note that the action is linked to a different token element named Stripe Marketplace Token A. Next, we'll need an additional event that creates a customer when the card token is created. And it's this event which is also linked to the same token element. And as the first step, we are creating a customer using the info captured by the form. Next, we are storing the customer ID using the result of step one. Then finally, we are creating a card using the customer ID, and we are also using the card token of the token element in the source token field. So now that we have a card added, let's see an example of creating a charge using a card ID. So when we press on the pay button, we get notified that the payment was successful. So let's see how it works in the workflows. So when this pay button is clicked, we are using the action that charges the customer using the customer ID and the card ID that we stored in the database. Next, we are storing the charge ID into the database for the current user. Let's now have a look at the process of creating a refund. We can do that by simply clicking on the refund button. And just like that, the refund was made. So let's now check the workflows. So when the refund button is clicked, we are simply using this action that creates a refund. And inside the action, we are providing the charge ID of the charge that we'd like to refund within this field. Finally, we are making changes to the current user by removing the charge ID from the database. And now that we have seen examples of the previous calls, it's now time to see how a card is deleted. So that can be done by simply clicking on the delete button and the card will be deleted from the database. Now let's see the workflows. 
So when the delete button is clicked, we are using the action that deletes a card. And we need to provide the customer ID as well as the card ID. And in the next step, we are simply clearing up the card ID from the database. Now at this point, we've had a look at both SEA calls and the charges API. But what's the difference between the two? And which one should you use for your own app? As mentioned before, Stripe Checkout and the Payment Intense API both use SCA. So that means all the calls provided by Stripe Checkout and the Payment Intense API are 3D secure. But regarding the Charges API, it does not use SCA or strong customer authentication. So the calls provided by the Charges API are not 3D secure. So because of this, SCA calls and the Charges API are not compatible. So you'll need to check the regulations provided by your own country and other regulations that are relevant to your business as to whether or not you need to use SEA related calls or not. And that brings us to the end of lesson seven. In lesson eight, we'll be exploring real examples that use the Stripe Marketplace Express plugin. And this will help you gain a better understanding of some of the concepts we have covered. So thanks for having a look at this video and we'll continue in the next one.